Good morning, Lakeview family, and welcome to 21 Days of Prayer. I'm Pastor Dustin, and I'm so glad you're joining us this morning. We believe God has a specific word for you. So sit back, get your Bible, get your notebook, and lean in to what God has to say to you today as one of our pastors brings a word. Hello, and welcome to 21 Days of Prayer. I'm DeShane, Outreach Pastor here at Lakeview Church. Today's prayer point is racial reconciliation. I want to start by asking a question. Is race and culture hindering your witness for Christ? Well, throughout history, race and culture has been a dominant factor in our society. It has influenced behaviors and several important decisions. In our homes and in our schools, race and culture is introduced and shows up through our intentional and unintentional interactions with one another. As a child, I remember being introduced to race when I overheard my elementary school teacher mention me as that little black boy and noticed that I was the closest to my schoolmates to being that little black boy. I never heard her relate a skin color to other schoolmates who were non-black. If she didn't know their names, their skin color was not a descriptor. At that point, my youthful will started to turn to recognize that there is a significant difference from me and my peers. Then came feelings of exclusion. This is the first time, everyone, that I've shared this story outside of myself. What do I know is that God's will for humankind is for our differences to be celebrated, not to create a separation. As we study the Bible, we see that race and culture has permeated up to and through Jesus' ministry on earth. One of the most common accounts involving interactions with race and culture is Jesus' travel through the city of Samaria. Though Jesus knew the friction between the Israelites and the Samaritans, that the Israelites vowed to separate themselves from the Samaritans and have nothing to do with them, Jesus had a different plan in mind. John 4, 4 through 9 shares, Now Jesus had to go through Samaria. He came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For the Jews do not associate with the Samaritans. Just as God's will, Jesus' plan was to reconcile the Samaritans' relationship with God and include them in the faith in Christ. Jesus' persistence to reconcile and include the Samaritans continued as he provided clarity to the Samaritan woman about the true living water. And he also offered her an opportunity for her and the Samaritan culture to reclaim their faith in Jesus. By Jesus taking that intentional step of interacting with the Samaritan culture rather than going around Samaria to his destination, they were transformed. John 4, 39 through 42 states, Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did, she said. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they, are, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days in Samaria. And because of his words, many more Samaritans became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Wow, what a great example of reconciliation and inclusion. Even more, what a great example of not letting race and culture hinder your witness for Christ. Another great example of God's reconciliation of race and culture occurs with Peter in Acts chapter 10. Peter, who was dubbed the rock in the New Testament and one of Jesus' closest disciples, still had lots of work to be done within himself before leading the early church. 
after Jesus' death, resurrection, and sending his Holy Spirit, God had to shift Peter's perspective regarding race and culture before Peter could truly be effective in transforming our Christian faith. Peter's initial, uh, Peter's initial view of race and culture influenced his belief, interactions with others outside of his Jewish culture. However, in God's design of including all humankind in his plan for salvation, Peter's narrow vision being exclusive to certain groups were at odds. Because of Peter's Jewish culture's unique relationship with God prior to Jesus' birth, Peter developed a sense of entitlement and privilege. Entitlement and privilege are two tricky mindsets to have. If not replaced with humility and compassion, it can lead to prejudices and biased interactions with others, as well as separation and exclusion. Entitlement and privilege impacted Peter's initial belief. Peter felt prideful, privileged, priority, he also felt that he was the primary focus of God and the promises of God were only afforded to himself and other Jewish followers. But God had to interrupt Peter's longtime belief from one separation, from one of separation and exclusion to that of reconciliation and inclusion. I just love the way God engineers this reconciliation process. First, God uses a non-Jew. But even more, God used an, an Italian Roman soldier to show his image of inclusion into the faith in Jesus Christ. Let us read how God initiates his reconciliation process. In Acts 10, 1 through 8, it shares, In Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius. He was a captain of an Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? He asked the angel, and the angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier one of, and one of his personal attendants. He told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. You see, God knew that Cornelius, this Italian Roman officer, was the perfect vessel to use to illustrate that salvation through Jesus Christ is not exclusive, rather inclusive. Salvation has no race or culture boundaries. God was not done yet. He had to do a work in Peter, then bring Peter and, Co and Cornelius' worlds together for God's perfect will to be done, one of reconciliation and for all to be included in the opportunity for salvation through Jesus Christ. God knew Peter could be properly positioned and effective to establish the growth of the early church, but his mindset about race and culture had to be readjusted to align with the mind of God. God had to shift Peter's Jewish culture mindset of exclusivity to kingdom culture mindset of inclusivity. Let us read how God prepares Peter's attitude as Cornelius' messengers draw near where he was residing. Acts 10, 9 through 16 shares, the next day as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up to the flat roof to pray. It was about noon and he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. It was the sheet, the sheet had all sorts of animals, reptiles and birds. Then a voice said to him, Get up, kill, and eat them. No, Lord, declared Peter. I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. That same vision was repeated three times. Then the sheet suddenly put up to heaven. Soon after Peter's vision concluded, God's transformational plan continues. The Holy Spirit alerted Peter to rise and without hesitation, go and accompany three men who are looking for him. 
It was a true test of Peter's obedience. Yet another step in God's reconciliation plan. Peter's obeying God and going with the men paved another path in this important road to reconciliation. Oh, don't get it wrong. Peter had his reservations. Think about it. Some unusual folks show up at your doorstep in your town requesting for you to go out of town with them and, and to an unfavorable place. Well, this is why Peter answered the door and, and stated, I'm the man you're looking for. What have, why have you come? The men responded, we were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. A holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so that you, he can hear your message. Man, this story of reconciliation and inclusion continues with Peter agreeing to meet with Cornelius at his home. As Peter travels to Cornelius' home, God continues to reveal to Peter the vision of the white sheep and the unclean and unpure animals uh, from Peter's Jewish culture. When Peter arrived and entered the home of Cornelius, there stood before him a room full of Gentiles who were enthusiastically waiting to hear a word from God. I'm sure this assembly of eager Gentiles was God's reminder to Peter of he and other Jewish disciples assembly in the upper room waiting on the arrival of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> in Acts 10, 28 and 29, Peter states to the assembly of Gentiles at Cornelius' home, you know it is against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile's home like this or to even associate with you. But God has shown that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without any objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you sent for me. Man, when Peter heard Cornelius share his encounter with the angel of God, Peter realized that he and Cornelius' vision aligned and the same God directing his path was directing this Gentile's path. Peter responds in Acts 10, 34 through 36 by stating, Ah, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Finally, God had to culminate this divine appointment between Peter and the house of Cornelius by his, and his plan for all to be included in the faith in Jesus. Acts 10, 40, 10, 44 through 46 shares, even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came uh, with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Wow, what a great story of God's hand in reconciling Peter's attitude and beliefs surrounding race and culture to allow him to be a better witness for Christ. In our Christian faith, we are called to be fishers of men and women, not fishers of certain men and women, but fishers of all men and women. So let's return to my initial question. Is race and culture hindering my witness for Christ? If you're thinking yes and desire to dig deeper concerning racial reconciliation, Lakeview Church has launched Be the Bridge Connect Group. Be the Bridge is a Christ-centered connect group which leans on biblical principles as, as the foundation to reconciling matters surrounding race. Be the Bridge participants must be ready to stay engaged and willing to stretch themselves to gain transformational reconciliation and become bridge builders. Be the Bridge is facilitated during our spring and fall connect group semesters. Why don't you come and join us? But let's pray in regards to racial reconciliation in our own lives so we can be a better witness for others. 
Father God, we thank and love you and honor you, God. It is you, God, who orchestrates all of our lives, Father God. We just ask you, God, to dig deep into our heartstrings, God, and pull out what we need to know and recognize in regards to where we are becoming a stumbling block to ourselves, which will hinder our witness for Christ, Father. Father, you created the different uh, hues of skin, Father, for us to be celebrated, Father God, for us to be included, Father God. God, you did it for nothing less but for us to be a celebratory witness and ambassadors for you, Father God. Father God, we ask you for forgiveness, Father God, if we are not walking in the way that you would if you were here on earth and interacting with others. Father, we ask you to, to release and remove any issues that we may have in regarding race and culture, Father God, because that is not the God we serve, God. You said whoever the Son sets free is free indeed, Father God. You didn't say who are uh, those few. What you said is whoever. And you also said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever... That means all. So we want to pray and we want to come to you, come to the altar, ask for forgiveness. And God, we ask you, God, to release any of those burdens of race and culture that is on our shoulders so we can be a better witness for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you found that word challenging, encouraging, and uplifting from Pastor. At this time, we're about to go into a time of worship together. If you want to continue to pray on today's prayer points, you can do so. They'll be on the screen throughout this time of worship. If you want to worship with us, I encourage you wherever you are to stand up, turn the music up, and fully engage in a time of worship and praise to God. If you have to go on about your day, I want to thank you so much again for joining us today. Continue to meditate on the word from Pastor today. Allow it to continue to challenge you and encourage you throughout your day. And we'll see you tomorrow.
All your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every the goodness of God. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna testify.
Sing 